Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be starting a new build, which is my 1970 Bug. You guys saw this car in one of the last videos where we were trying to get it running. I got it running really good now, it's just a carb that it ended up needing. But in today's video, we're gonna be lifting the rear of the car, as well as getting the car on jack stands so I can get the rims all off and send them out to powder coat. The next few videos on this car are gonna be building the beam to class 11 specifications and just getting everything wrapped up and cleaned and painted. But like I said, today's video is just gonna be lifting the rear and kind of getting everything blown apart. So for all you guys who've been wondering kind of how to do this, I know there's a few videos out there. Hopefully this one's just a little bit more updated and easier to watch. So we'll get into it. I gotta move the bug over to here where this roach is currently sitting. So I gotta move this thing out and get the bug over here so we can get started. All this thing needs is like two hits of the pedal and she'll always fire up. After a week, dude, just instantly. It didn't even take one crank and this thing's fired up. I spent a little bit of time off camera getting one side already completed and you can already see how much the car is actually raised. You can fit a whole hand in here now, no problem. So gonna move on to the other side. The first thing you wanna do to get started here is we're gonna wanna jack up this side, put a jack on this side, and then go ahead and pull the wheel off and we'll get started. Essentially what you're doing to lift one of these cars is you're popping these plates off and inside here there's a torsion bar so you're popping it off, rotating it down a spline and putting it all back together. What that's doing is changing where these arms are before there's any load applied. So when there is load applied, they're gonna not be as high. So what that's doing is just raising the whole back of this car up. So it's a pretty simple concept, but this can be sort of a pain in the butt to do. But I'll show you guys some of the tips and tricks that I've been doing and it makes it a little bit easier. So the first thing we need to do is get this bump stop off, pull the shock out, and then we're gonna use a flathead screwdriver to make a little scribe in here. That way we get all of our settings back in here and nothing's really changed. And then we can start pulling these bolts out and moving on to here. These bump stops are super easy to get off. You should just be able to use even one hand just like that. Just pop it off. These bolts right here are 19 millimeter, same with these. So I'll just grab my impact and get these shocks out of here. should just pop out of here no problem and this thing is pretty old so we're just going to toss this aside so as you can see it's definitely not pretty but it's going to be very beneficial to when we're putting this back together so now that that's marked we can go ahead and get these all out these are all 19 millimeters So now is where your jack's gonna come in handy. So just go ahead and start jacking this up. It should just slide right through these two plates because there's nothing holding them together now. And we'll just start going up. You also might wanna put your uh, e-brake on just so this drum isn't spinning around. So that's gonna be as high as you can go. So now I'm just gonna take this tie down and we're gonna loop it around just to hold this whole arm up. So you can see now this whole thing's held up. I have a tie down, wrap around the axle and around the arm, come back up and just loop around and go back into the same hold. So now everything here is held up. And the reason we restrain this thing up is so that we can pop these plates out. You can see there's a little ledge right here. We're gonna pull these off, loosen those, and then we gotta pop it out around that ledge. And just having this up and out of the way allows this to come out easier. I don't think it's even possible to do it with this in there. So you gotta get this up and out of the way. That way you can start playing with those plates. So I'm gonna bring the jack under here and have it under these plates. That way when we start messing with these bolts, this thing's just not gonna drop and fly out. There's gonna be some support under it. So slide it under, and then these are all 15 millimeter. I'm gonna start pulling these out. Now 
now that we have all those bolts out, I've gone ahead and just dropped the jack a little bit. You can see there's a gap in between those plates and the jack. And the reason for that is we're now gonna pop these plates off of that little wedge down there and it's gonna drop down and hit the jack. You can see there's a little bit of a gap right here and the same exists down here on the back side. So I'm gonna take our pickle fork or any sort of wedge and go from the back side, it'll go in there. So that's gonna be sort of the setup and I'm just gonna start whacking it with a hammer and it's gonna force this thing to pop over and come off of that wedge and then we'll just lower it all the way down to where there's no more load on these spring plates. The reason I was hitting on these with a the hammer still after it was no longer attached to the jack is because the back side of this plate is rubbing up against the ledge that we popped it off of. So just to make sure there was no load on the torsion, I hit it down. And then now that it's not moving, we know that there's no more load on the torsion bar. And so we're gonna take our flat head again and we're gonna go ahead and just go like this. Just go ahead and scribe it. Get a nice mark in there. So the reason we've added that mark is when we pop off these plates from the torsion bar, if something goes wrong, we can pop it back on and just see if it's in the correct place. And also when we lower it down one, you'll see an angle change. It's not gonna match up perfectly. So we know that we've actually lifted the car. So now that we've done that, we should just be able to work this guy off there and see if either the inner spline pops out or it pops off of the outer spline. The other side I did the outer, so I need to get the outer popped off on this one. I'll put up a little indexing chart right now. The inside of the torsion bar has 40 splines and the outside has 44. So just look at that chart, whatever you wanna do, it'll tell you what you need to do to your torsion bar to get it to the desired ride height. This side has started to pop off of the splines. The way I get it started is I'll just take the hammer and lightly tap around here. That way the vibrations will just go through and it'll work this thing off slowly. So you can see the bushing in here is starting to come out a little bit. So now I can do it by hand and just slowly wiggle it until we get it off the spines. And be careful, you don't wanna just pull it off because then you're gonna have no idea where everything's set. So just take your time, slowly wiggle it, and then just rotate it down and keep putting pressure in. So as soon as it hits that next spline, it's just gonna pop back in. So I can feel it's popped off that outer one. So I'm just gonna carefully try and rotate it to get it back on. So one thing you'll notice too, is when you're doing that, this bushing right here, it has a little bump on it. So if you get it and you rotate it and you pop it back on and that thing goes in perfectly, you probably haven't changed the right head at all like I just did. So you can see, I still haven't done it. And so I'm gonna try and pop it off again and just take my time and get it down a spline. Since I actually got this off, I'm gonna take a wire wheel to it and get all this caked up mud off there and then pop it back on. Sometimes it's a little bit tricky to get it on here, so if you can get it off, don't do anything until you get it back on. That definitely looks a lot better. So it took a little bit of finagling, but I got it down one spline. You can see the bushing up here is a little bit misaligned, so I'm gonna need to rotate it in order for it to fit in that notch. But just by looking at that, you can see there's a slight angle change there, and that's all we need to get about two inches of ride height change on this car. So now I'm gonna pop this back in, and get these top bolts started on this plate. You guys will probably run into the same issue that I am currently having and that I had on the other side as well. You get this spring plate up there and you're trying to get in the bolt and you try and put a socket on here and the socket's not shallow enough to where you can put pressure on this bolt head to get it to go into the hole. So something that I've figured out, you get a couple pieces of ram board and you just stuff them down in there that way when your bolt head goes in. It's actually just a little bit backed off of there. That way you know you're putting pressure on the head of the bolt and not onto the plate itself with the outer edge of that socket. I got the top bolt started. Now in order to get these lower ones in, I'm gonna start jacking this up. One thing that you're gonna notice is that the force from the torsion bar is gonna be pushing down so hard on this that it's gonna start lifting the whole car off of the jacks. So just be very careful not to knock this thing off the jacks. I've seen some people wrap like a chain around here and then go to the torsion tube up there, but I didn't need to do that on the other side and I didn't do that on my red car either. So I'm gonna do it this way and just slowly jack it up until it starts coming over that ledge and I can see that I can start to get the lower bolts in. Okay. 
So I now got this jacked up to where it needs to be. You can see we're about an inch or two off of the jack over there. One important thing to mention is that you want to get this back plate around the back side of this arm again. And then right there you can see we're above the wedge now. So I can start trying to get these bottom bolts in. The challenge with this is that the bolts that come off of here, you can tell how far we're away. So it's really hard to get those back in. And that's why I went and got those bolts that I mentioned earlier. So this is an M10 with a 1.5 thread pitch. And you can see the difference in length here. Definitely a lot longer. So this should be able to go in. Maybe I'll have to manipulate that plate in a little bit more. Nope, it will go in. I just need to get things lined up. So I'm gonna go ahead and tap the bottom of this to get it moved over, get this going, and then I'll get this rear one started, get the upper one in, and then pull this one out last to replace it with the stock bolt. So I got this side all wrapped up. It ended up being a little bit more tricky than I thought it was going to be. I had to run both the longer bolts on the bottom two to get the upper right one in, and then I swapped out the lower ones for the original ones, but we're all back together now. I took the strap out of here and dropped the arm back down and it's just sitting in there. One thing to recommend to you guys is when you're putting these bolts back in, put these two in there first because those are a little bit tricky to get in because of the clearance to this arm. So just do those first, get them all in, and then just line up your scribe marks that you made and this should all go back together smoothly. So just like that, got the back of this thing all wrapped up. Lifting the rear of these cars isn't super complicated. Just doing it can be a pain in the butt to get everything to line up and all back together. But hopefully this was just a good shortened up video from the other ones you see on YouTube. That's straight to the point and shows you how to do it. Christian, what are you doing, dude? Yeah, Jeep things. Yeah, you want to talk about your new Jeep? It's not my Jeep. <laughs> Would you buy one? No. Why not? I'm just working on it. Yeah, so you're just going through the front end, right? Yeah, just doing a prep. Well, front end rear. Just doing a prep on all the suspension because the owner of it has just driven it and abused it and he just wanted me to go through it just to make sure he doesn't have any issues with it. So just full prep. You gotta do that every prep. once in a while. Yeah. So yeah, this isn't ours for those of you who are probably wondering that saw it in the back of the video. But yeah, how was this last night? Removing these yeah, tires, dude. It's pretty sick. I use I've seen this meth the method that we used I've seen done before, but I've never personally done it. So we use just the hoist, like a normal engine hoist. That guy over some, there pieces of tubing basically going across the tires and then just use the hoist to pull the, the wheel up out of the tire basically to break the bead. And it was the sketchiest thing I've probably ever done, but it works, so. I mean, I don't know if it was the sketchiest, but yeah. No, it's, it, it, was, got... it was definitely probably one of the top five sketchiest things I've ever was... done in my life. Well, we got, we got these things all handled, got the beads popped, got the tires off. One thing to note, when you're taking stuff to powder coat, just knock all of the wheel weights off here that are used for balancing. That way, like when you put new tires on here, it's probably not gonna be the same anyway. So just strip all that off, get your valve stems out of here as well. I ordered some metal ones that will be here in the next few days, but I'm gonna take these off to Powder Coat right now. We usually go over to Anacote Powder on Miramar Road. That's just where we've taken everything for production this Avenue. truck. Yeah, Production Avenue, that's where it is over there. We got all the panels and everything done over here. So I'm gonna take these there and get them done. Hopefully they'll be wrapped up in the next few days and we can get them back on the car. The next video you're gonna see for this build is going to be building the front beam. I'm gonna be doing a full class 11 style beam and set it up completely how it would be if you're racing class 11. So stay tuned for that video. If you guys like this one, please leave a like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. You gotta slap the GoPro now, dude. It's a different theory. It's too small. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.